Welcome back, everyone. So I just picked me up a new lawnmower. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Seriously? Are you high? Well, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, this is a late 80s uh, Toro 20622 um, that belonged to my girlfriend's mother for the past 30 years. She got it used um, from, I believe the family of um, Amelia's father. Anyway, this mower um, looks like shit. <laughs> I'm just going to get to the point. It looks bad. Um, it's got oil leaks. It's got a broken drive belt. It's got problems. Um, but the funny thing is, as shitty as it looks, Check this out. And it's cold. I haven't even started it yet. Okay, I need some work. Need a car cleaning. It will not run at low speed. First pull. This mower has not been serviced in years. The oil. The oil. Oh my god, the oil. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. It, it made it, it's dirty, but yeah, this thing needs some help. Um, so why are we saving this more? Why are we doing all this? Well, the thing is, so here's the deal. Um, my girlfriend broke her ankle um, a couple months ago, two months ago now, and Unfortunately, I have to work. Um, she can't work now because of her ankle, and you know she's she's on all these restrictions. And she can't put weight on it. So, um, consequently, um, of course, I still have to work. I still have to pay bills, so um, I can't be here to help her out. But her mom, she works weird hours, so she's able to come by the house like every day. You know, I'd come home many times you know in a week and there'd be you know hot meals ready for me and um you know amelia will be pretty much zonked out on the couch because she didn't have to do anything her mom took care of everything making sure her her bandages are tight and dressed and clean i mean she's been like a like a like a nurse uh to amelia for the past past month or two and um so when I got a call from her saying that she wanted me to try to fix her mower because it won't drive anymore, it's got a self-propulsion system, and um, self-propelled, and uh, the belt broke, clearly. So I said, you know what, well, let me uh, see what I can do. So I took a look at the mower, and this is the first time I had actually seen what she, I didn't even know what kind of mower she had. And I'm looking at this thing, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> This was the king of lawnmowers in the 80s. This was like the best mower you could buy. I mean, somebody paid a lot of money for this thing. And um, and I started it up first pull. And I'm looking it over. I'm like, you know, let me, I have a better idea. So I wanted to do something nice uh, for Amelia's mom. So I went ahead and I gave her my two-year-old Toro. Actually, about three-year-old Toro. You've had it three years now self-propelled rear bagger uh, it's a toro recycler um very nice mower one of the smart stove models you can store it vertically 
and it's in mint condition. I mean, I take really good care of it. Um, oil changes every season, that kind of thing. Um, so what I did was I changed the oil. I, I mowed my lawn one last time with it. Look at it nice, nice and green. I changed the oil, put a brand new air filter on it, filled the tank with fresh gas, loaded it up in the car, brought it over and grabbed this. Um, so that way she has a nice newer lawnmower that will start every day and she needs it to. Um, doesn't need any work, doesn't need any maintenance, it's ready to go. And um, I took this on as my next mower. Um, but we're not really committed to it yet. I'm just, I've got some concerns. Um, this thing does have a lot of oil leaks, it looks like. Maybe just one small oil leak. We'll have to see. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to start off by we're going to we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to pressure wash the shit out of this thing and uh, kind of get down to brass tacks, so to speak. What I like about these mowers, and I actually had one of these uh, same model. Um, I think it even had the same engine on it. This, by the way, is a Suzuki engine that's been badged as a Toro. So Toro partnered with Suzuki to supply these engines. Um, under their own name, Toro, which is, funnily enough, kind of like what they're doing now with Chinese manufacturers. Um, the one that I gave Amelia's mom was a Briggs & Stratton, so that was the exception. But a lot of the Toro products today have no markings on the engines, but they're clearly made by a Chinese supplier and slapped with Toro badges. But this is kind of the early days of that. Um, Toro did use uh, Suzuki two-stroke and four-stroke engines on these mowers. Um, this one just happens to be the four-stroke, which I personally prefer for reliability purposes. Um, but there was a two-stroke version of this engine. Uh, well, a totally different engine, but also a Suzuki. And then after they, I think that partnership dissolved and they started building engines with Tecumseh. And um, so, like I was saying, I had one of these, almost identical machine. Um, I bought it from an old neighbor years ago, and turned out it had a bent crankshaft. Like, it had this nasty vibration. I could not figure out what it was, and I, I looked underneath, and I'm like, it's got a new blade on it. I mean, I, it turns out that the crankshaft was bent just a wee bit, just enough to throw it off. And um, so I ended up scrapping the mower. Actually, I think it still exists. <laughs> Come to think of it, I think it's still around. Um, the guy that I got it from, he's, he's got a junk collection, and I think he has it somewhere in his pile of junk. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. So what are our plans with this thing? Well, I want to start off with the basics. We're going to pressure wash it. We're going to see where the oil's leaking. I think I know where. Um, let's take a look underneath. Now, this thing has no issues in terms of anything beyond wear and tear okay clearly that oil is coming from up top here possibly a crankcase breather so that could be excessive blow by that could just be a clogged breather it could be it could be it could be a cold or it could be cancer so hopefully it's not a, not cancer this is an overhead valve mower our uh, engine and in 1988 that was kind of a big deal um nowadays it's standard but in the 80s that was a new thing um looks like we're going to need to change some fuel lines i'm going to get a carburetor kit for this i can still get one so the carburetor kit is going to be done um we're going to i already have a new belt and a new blade on order so let's see if we have a leak at the bottom uh, i don't think so but it'll be under this cover so this has a blade clutch, meaning the engine will run, um, but you have to engage the clutch to get the blade to move. And that all works fine. I tested that out a minute ago. But this blade is about as dull as a butter knife. Um, looks like there aren't any cracks. That would be a deal breaker right there. It's got a self-drive and everything. That all works. It worked until the belt broke, so I'm told. Yeah, that bell's broken, for sure. Um, you know, I don't want to pour too much into this. I do want to do a paint job, though. 
Oh, here we go. I think I have a year of production. Looks like 88. There's an 8 and 8 on that bottom of that right there. Bottom of the fuel tank. So this looks like a 1988 model year. But we got to get the oil changed. Where is the drain plug on this thing? This is cracked. That's just a cover. If I find that this thing has too much damage, I'm just going to abandon it. I'm, I'm serious. I, I'm going to just let it go. But I'm going to try to save it. Um, make it like new again. And the more I look at it, though, the more I'm thinking maybe this is kind of a dumb, uh, a foolish endeavor. Maybe I should just sell it. I'll put a blade on it. I'll change the belt and put it up for sale. 50 bucks or whatever I got in it for parts. Clean it up, change the oil. You know, just do the basics. I don't know. i got to dig into it. Before I start buying parts or any more parts, I've got to really start digging it. Digging it up, uh, digging into it. <sighs> Boy, this could be <laughs> this could be a colossal waste. But let's get her cleaned up. Let's do that first. This will start off with a little simple green. Full strength. To cut right through any of the grease and oil that's on it, which there's a lot of. But yeah, I have plans for this thing. So, anyone who knows me or has been a long-time viewer, you'll know that I happen to prefer older equipment when possible because it was just built better, <laughs> you know? There's quality in this machine that you don't you don't get today. And if I wanted something similar to this in quality, I'd have to buy a commercial machine, which they do sell. I can buy for $1,000. I can pick up a commercial grade Toro that will last the rest of my life for sure, um, based on simple homeowner use. But, um, I'd rather not spend a thousand dollars on a lawnmower. The one I had was fine. I didn't get rid of my mower because I didn't like it. I gave it away to somebody who needed one. So there's a difference there. So we'll see how this goes. I'll let that soak in for a bit. I gotta clean my car out. There's grass everywhere. So I gotta deal with that now. There we go.
She still starts. Let's see where the water got where it shouldn't go. Yep. I'm gonna warm up the motor, get the oil nice and warm, and we'll drain it out and fill it. Engage the blade.
<laughs> the choke is a little bit engaged too. So we gotta get new bolts. I'm gonna clean this up as best I can. Maybe paint the handle. Got an air pocket in the line, I think. All right, look at how clean that. Look at how clean that's getting. Ah, that's how you do it. Okay, so we got this thing all pretty much cleaned up as well as we're going to get it. Um, I'm going to have to bring this down into the basement where we have all the tools and lighting, um, better lighting than what we have here. But we're going to tear this thing down. We're going to find out where that oil leak is coming from. I have a theory that it's the uh, crankcase ventilation. Um, more than likely, we're going to need to do a couple of engine gaskets um it's gonna need some help man <laughs> i mean now that it's all cleaned up i i'm thinking at this point i don't know i'll put it to a vote what do you guys think do i do i dump a bunch of money into this thing and fix it up and make it new again or do we just save our money and sell this thing for a uh, hundred bucks but then again, it's, it's the end of the, uh, the lawn mowing season. So, you know, it's, it's the end of the season. So selling it in New England is going to be a bitch now. Um, and I don't even know what I'd get for it. Probably nothing. Or do we just uh, continue on and uh, make it live again? I don't know. What do you think? I'm honestly asking. I'd like to hear from what's that guy, um, Hank, Hank, uh, Hank's toolbox, Hank's wood box, at whatever. I'll figure your name out in a minute, but I'm sure he's worked on a lot of these over the years. I've never worked on a Suzuki engine before, other than the, um, the moped engine I had on my living room or dining room table. Um, there's another series of videos I did. So we're looking at, you know, maybe, um, strip the paint off the side. What I, I mean, if I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go all the way. We're going to strip the paint off the deck. We're going to put a, a bonding primer or something on this. It's aluminum. And we're going to repaint it red. 
I'm going to put a clear coat finish on it that's fuel resistant. That's, that's, that's a little bit of money right there. Or we just do the mechanical repairs and don't worry about the cosmetics. Um, but I'm going to do some cosmetics to it. But, uh, this is, <laughs> i got to get the oil out of this thing. I can't find the drain plug. Um, I'm going to have to look harder because I know there is one. Unless this is one of those ones you tilt to it to its side and you drain it from the uh, dipstick tube. It could be one of those. But um, I want to repaint the valve cover. I'll get some silver engine paint, put that on there. Maybe we'll do the, um, the exhaust guard. Um, but as I was washing it, all the loose bubbly paint was just gone most of it but the thing is you know this mower this was the mower to have if you were middle class upper upper middle class and you had a you, know, you didn't live in a in a large lot this is what you had this is this was the expensive mower of its time this was the deluxe edition the uh the the, the mercedes benz of the lawnmower fleet um you got a Japanese engine, a solid American die cast deck. Might might have been die cast. I don't know for sure. It's a rear bagger. Um, it's before the recycler series, though, so it's a little bit on the older side. 1988, I think I said it was. Um, you've got, you know, some of the controls that you lost from lawnmowers in succeeding years. Um, for example, you've got a throttle control. Um no mower today has throttle control. In fact, I think that started, they started deleting that in the mid 90s and going, and I think that was an EPA thing where they were designing the carburetors with fixed jets that could not be adjusted and they were designed to run at one speed only. That was definitely an EPA thing. Um, not that I'm against it. <laughs> you might be wondering where I stand on that. No, no, I think that's, I think that was for the better. But um, because a lot of these engines, they would run very dirty. Um, they weren't getting maintained. I mean, this one right here, this has been probably 10 years since its last oil change. Um, so it, it hasn't been getting regular maintenance. Unfortunately, it's now pouring outside, so I can't do any work outdoors. But we got to figure out how to get the oil out of this thing. Um, and I'm in a cramped space now, so maybe we'll open the door again. Let's try that. But I gotta get some new handle bolts. That's an easy one right there. Um, let's see. How do you get the oil out of this thing? I gotta find a manual for this thing. Well, this is um, this is interesting. The belt isn't actually broken. I think the cable's broken, but the belt's still very much intact. Uh, I'm looking at this assembly here as you know, something broke, but it's not the belt. Um, there's something inside this box here I'll probably let go because it's supposed to. When I pull on this, there should be resistance. No, there is none. So the belt's fine. Um, and the cable, I don't think the cable's broken, but. We're going to find out in a minute. I should have taken that off first and then pressure washed it, but well, here we are. Um, the question is, does the gearbox still work? Um, I don't know. I said it's the wrong way. I don't know if the gearbox works. I think there's a there's a clutch in here somehow somewhere. Or maybe it has to be spinning at a high rate of speed. Well, we have more to work on here. Um, new development. Uh, let's fix that. Let's see what's what's going on here.
work. Put it in neutral. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to change the belt. And it looks like that cable is broken. I was able to pull the cable out of the sheath pretty far. And uh, that just tells me that, yeah, there's a there's a break somewhere in that cable. Um, I'm going to have to disassemble the handle, but we're not going to do that right now. Maybe in another video, we'll take the handle apart. We'll look at the cable and we'll see about fixing it. The engine looks pretty good, though. Nice and clean. I think I found the oil plug, and to get to it, I have to... But there's an easier way. We're just going to take the oil cap off, and we're going to dump it into a bucket. Um, I need to get a new, uh, maybe a new dipstick tube. I think this is supposed to have... I think it's supposed to thread on, but it, um, there, had, there are no threads on it anymore. That could be normal. No, you know what? Yeah, all the threads are, are mashed down. So we've got to replace the oil dipstick tube and the, um, the dipstick itself. But we'll put some fresh oil in her. And uh, let's see how dirty and nasty that oil is. I can only imagine. This is from the, the Briggs I just did the oil change in. Let's see how this one looks. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. It's still got some lubricant to it. But it's not good oil. Yeesh, it's kind of gross. We'll let that drain out. But check it out. Looks like the flywheel's got a plastic blade on it. No, that might be cast. Oh, boy. I figure if we just do the bare minimum, get it running, we'll change out the cable that's bad. I could probably get many years out of this machine just by doing that bare minimum. We'll replace the missing bolts, maybe do a little more cleanup, do a complete tune-up, carburetor uh, overhaul. It's going to need that for sure. Change out the broken parts. I think a full repaint is probably going to be a little overkill. Although it would be kind of nice to see it looking new again. I don't know. What do you guys think? Think I'm nuts? We'll lubricate the wheels. I mean, the wheels are in pretty good shape. So Amelia's mom's yard is actually smaller than ours. Um, it's on like, I think her house is on like 5,000 square feet. So that's, um, we're on, I think we're on over 9,000 square feet on this lot. And uh, hers is a little bit, uh, quite a bit smaller than this one. So this mower hasn't seen a very hard life. Um, you know, so, I mean, that's a little feather in his cap. Is that water or gas? Oh, just water. Okay, I'm going to be nervous there for a second. We do know that the dipstick tube is probably leaking at that gasket. Probably an O-ring in there. Um, but let's, uh, take a look at this oil. Oh my. Yeah, it hasn't been done in a while. Um, years. I would say many, many years. Tens of years. 20 years. Eesh. Nasty, nasty stuff. It smells like oil. It doesn't smell like gasoline. That's good. That's a good sign. Looks like there's going to be, I love this bucket because it, it tells me how much came out. Oh, wow, 24 ounces. Now, in comparison, the Briggs engine that I just gave her um, only takes 16 ounces. I'm going to, this is a good talking point. So the Briggs engine is advertised as never needing an oil change. You just check the oil and add oil as needed. That's what Briggs is whole. I know, right? So... You would think that an engine that, you know, they're really downplaying the need for oil changes, you'd think that they would at least have some kind of a, a large volume of oil, right? Fairly healthy amount of oil for that to be 
you know, a reasonable expectation. <laughs> you'd, you'd be wrong because only 16 is half the oil, well, almost half the oil that this thing takes. Um, and as you know, oil, the more oil you have in your sump, number one, the less time you have before it runs out of oil completely, but also it gets dirtier slower. Okay, so less oil means dirtier faster. What are they thinking? Well, I know what they're thinking. You know what they're thinking. But why do we stand for this as consumers? Why are we okay with this, you know? I guess because we don't care. So I need to put 24 ounces of oil in there. A full quart is... How many ounces are in a quart? Do <laughs> I really have to ask that? I used to know that. I used to know that in like fifth grade, and I haven't really applied that knowledge. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to put some fresh oil in there, and then we're going to call it a day. Um, because there's other things that I need to do today, but I just didn't get to it. So I need about 24 ounces, and this thing, this is the one I used. I'll put 20 ounces in, then we'll check it and see where it's at. I just used this with fresh oil, so this is, this is okay. Why is this blue? <laughs> Why is this blue? Oil shouldn't be blue. This is what the hardware store had in stock, so that's what I bought. It's a full synthetic. Uh, is it five? Yeah, ten W thirty. So that should be that should be all it needs. It's blue. What's this? Smurf blood? Is why it cost me eleven dollars? I've never seen blue oil before. Wait a minute. No, I'm for a second. But wait a minute, I have seen blue oil before, and it's not for four-stroke engines. Okay. Oh, let's fill her up, son. Smurf blood. Why am I putting oil in this thing when I know I have to take the dipstick tube out? Uh, you know what? I can tip the engine sideways. Sideways. That's my, my my dad would say that. He's from Rhode Island. Sideways. Idiot. Sideways. What am I from New England? Well, yes. Yes, I am. All right. It doesn't that seems like an awful lot of oil for such a small engine. But then again, this is Kawazuki, so <clears throat> Where does that bring us? Is it overfilled? Probably. Probably, yeah. yeah. A little bit. It's a little over the fill mark. Not by much. It's a little. No, oh, we won't have to. We won't have to add anything for a while. Oh, I'm I'm impressed. Um, so yeah, it starts right up. First pull. Um, wanted to get some of that new Smurf blood flowing through its mains. I'm not sure if this engine has a pump or a slinger. I would imagine being Japanese, it has an actual pump, oil pump, and uh, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, we won't know where the leaks are for quite some time. Um, it'll have to be run, maybe mow the lawn for about a season before we really catch, uh, catch a, a good idea or a good glimpse as to where all the leaks are, because you know what's got them. Um, but I'm going to have to pull the fuel tank. I mean, I'm not ready to do this today, but we're going to have to pull the fuel tank off. It still has the air filter box um, cover, which is kind of cool. These get lost all the time on these, so I've been told. But that air filter, I mean, look at it. It's still got some life left in it, believe it or not. We'll kind of wash this out in the in the laundry. There's some water in there. That could be oil. Um, so, so, you know, that's another thing is whoever owned this, or whoever owned this, whoever took care of it for her, because um, it wasn't me. I didn't know Amelia back then, but somebody had the foresight to oil the oil filter, or the air filter. Um, you're supposed to do that. That's how they work. It's kind of like an oil bath, but not. 
but some of that oil could have been could have contributed because it's soaked this thing is soaked in oil look at this some of that oil could be a contributing factor in the amount of oil that's been leaked out of there so it could be from the air filter some of it could be uh, not a lot of it but some i think this thing is worth saving what do you guys think i think it's got life left in it yet a lot of life left in it that engine sounds absolutely healthy healthy as a horse it doesn't it's got good ignition strong ignition good compression no smoking no knocking it did smoke a little bit on startup who cares <laughs> when it's running i don't smell oil um so it's not really burning a ton of oil and this thing hasn't had an oil change in god knows how long and she doesn't know how to check the oil and she's been mowing her lawn with it for a decade so based on the amount of oil i pulled out of that crankcase about 20 ounces 24 ounces almost yeah 24 ounces of oil that was in that crankcase um shit <laughs> I, if it was burning oil it would have seized long ago so I, I i'm i'm feeling good about this one um just the cosmetics we gotta we gotta do a we're gonna do a, a, a blade i've already ordered the blade and i've ordered a belt we're gonna do those straight away we're gonna do the um the drive clutch cable which is clearly snapped but it looks like a bitch to get to it um we'll change that out i'm sure i can get one um there's a lot of parts out there for these still as old as this thing is i don't think parts are going to be a problem at least what i need and we are going to do a carburetor kit i'm going to repaint the engine cover it's start, you can starting to see it's, it's got some rust on it we'll repaint the engine cover um or the, the uh the flybull shroud this is gonna be my new whip and i'm gonna get many many years out of this i gotta figure out what i'm gonna do for the handle though we gotta get new bolts uh, maybe i may i may repaint this i'm just gonna paint it silver call it a day and then uh we'll just we'll just live with that the chrome is too far gone to do a simple cleanup with with um steel wool it's just it's it's too far gone so well guys uh that's going to conclude it and yes we tested the drive in all three speeds and it's going good so i don't i'm gonna have to change the oil in that i don't know i think it's just gear oil in there maybe so we'll, we'll, we'll work on that but um yeah this thing's got life left in it for sure it's no nothing's broken nothing's damaged nothing's abused and the bag the bag is still good i didn't even talk about this but the bag is like new i mean it's not torn it's not 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 fraying it's in really good shape and uh, I think she's going to be good machine for some years. I can still buy this bag, too. It's just the, <clears throat> not the bag frame, but you can buy the bag by itself um, and just slide it on the frame. I might buy one just to have it if I'm going to keep this for a, minute, a number of years. But um, stay tuned for more updates on this. I don't know when I'm going to get to it next. But um, I've got plans for this thing. You just watch. So I'm here cleaning up the bag. I just propped it over this ladder and it's cleaning up quite nicely and there's no damage. This bag, believe it or not, this bag is 34, 35 years old and it's actually in better shape than the one that I, I gave her, um, which is only three years old. Um, but these can last as long as you empty them every, after every use and they'll last a long time. Um, but there's no tears. The, fa the fabric is good. This is sewn onto the frame, so I can't take it off. I was going to put it in the washing machine on a gentle cycle and then air dry it. But I can't do that um, without unstitching it. Uh, the current bags, um, and maybe even the replacement ones, are clipped on. So they can be taken off easier. But back in the old days at least the factory bags were not um were not removable i'm cleaning with just plain water and bleach you know make sure we rinse all that bleach out so we don't rust out the frame but um it's looking pretty good